Hey guys, so for those of you guys that were scheduled for the 15th of November, here we go. I'm finally getting to your channel reads. I'm so sorry that it took me so long, but this is my list for this particular read right here. Karen, I think it's Bloom. Bloom. I pronounced it wrong and you can totally send me all the dagger eyes. I'm so sorry. Keisha Handy, Amy Walker, Summer Thompson, Bridget Olson, April Van Grohl, Courtney Butter. Butter? Butler, Butter, I cannot read today. I'm so sorry, Courtney. Michelle Elms, Kelly Boutwell, Leslie Crosby, Angela Rector, Laura Gallardi, and Amelia Jansen. So we ready? Let's get into it. As good as we can, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna warn you guys that as I'm filming this today, the last couple of days here, the weather has been weird. Today is decent but it's still weird because we have another storm moving in tomorrow. And so my words are not working correctly. And when I was filming my last one, I had this eye start doing all the weird, stupid things. So just go ahead and giggle with me and we'll get through it, I promise. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Miss Karen, I've got my blue appetite gal here that I'm playing with. I tried doing it with the light on earlier and it just makes me look like, um, I don't know. It makes me look like a star person, which is cool, but not cool at the same time. Okay. So Miss Karen. Wow. So the very first thing I saw with you, like I had to take a super deep breath. Um, the very first thing I saw with you was this massive wall come up like a big, just cinder blocks with terrible looking concrete over them. You know how somebody doesn't know what they're doing or they just don't give a shit and they just slap concrete up and it's got all the spiky things in it. You are so blocked. You are so blocked right now. Like I can feel the frustration in the pit of my stomach, like all the way up through me like that. Like it's just, so not only are you blocked, but you have been for a little bit and you don't know how, okay. So what's funny is here's the wall and I'm facing the wall. And on this side of the wall where I am before the blockage, like the blockage is in front of me, it's sunshiny and it's beautiful and it's bright. Behind the wall is dark, dark as shit. Like so dark, you can't even see the dark in the dark. You know, y'all know what I mean. Like sometimes it's dark and you can see the shadows in the dark. This is just ink. So here's what I'm going to say. I know that this wall is frustrating and I know that you want it down and I know that the way that this block is and the way that it got there, the way that it got there is uh, not nice. But here's the thing, this is protecting you because whatever is on the other side of this wall is, I heard two things at the same time. It's not good and you're not ready for it yet. But here's the thing, I know that you want this wall down, but it's like the harder you try, the harder you come up against this wall, the thicker the wall gets. The wall will come down when it's time for the wall to come down, but don't rush it and don't push it. And I know that that's really hard to do, especially when you want your abilities back, your intuition. Your intuition right now is working exactly how it needs to work. It's working for you. It's working for your, those immediately in your circle, et cetera. And I think you're still getting random things for people that you don't even know. And you're kind of like, why the fuck am I getting that? Like, I haven't talked to this person in years or whatever. Your stuff, your gifts are still working the way that they're supposed to work. Okay. The wall is there as protection right now. And it's interesting that that popped up. Um, because there are a lot of people that feel like this right now. Um, I don't know what this shift is in the world going on in the last literally couple of days. And I know that you've waited a long time for me to get to this, but here's the thing. I think that if I had done this read for you on the 15th, it would not have been this important because this right here, I know you're pushing against it and I know you're trying to find a way to break the wall down, but as your friend and as somebody that's done this for a very long time, don't, don't, 
Okay. I know that sometimes people are all like, oh, let's break through all the things. There are times when you don't need to break through the things you need to allow the universe to have the block there as protection on purpose and let it be. Okay. This wall will start lowering itself down when it's time and it is not time yet. So what I would recommend instead is shift your focus from breaking the wall down to trusting your intuition and trusting your gut. So this means to start recording everything that you feel, you see, et cetera, whether it's a notepad on your phone, whether it's an actual notepad, whether it's you sending emails to yourself, whatever it is that you need to do to start trusting your intuition more. And I know that this takes a lot of effort, trust me, because I did it and I still do it. To prove to yourself that, yes, that is exactly what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're hearing, and trust that so you can act on it, you have to see it. You have to put it into words. You have to be able to have a record of it because having a record of it and going, oh, two weeks ago, I saw that Uncle Bob was going to get in a car wreck with a green truck. It gives you several things. A, the confidence and the trust in yourself. B, a time frame. Okay, I know that these happen about two to three weeks before the event happens. And C, it allows you to hone that gift. Okay, so instead of just Uncle Bob's going to get in a car wreck, then it becomes Uncle Bob's going to get in a car wreck with a green truck. Then it becomes Uncle Bob's going to get in a car wreck with a green truck at this intersection. You see what I mean? It starts allowing you to pinpoint. Okay, so don't focus on the wall. Focus on honing your ability right now because this wall is here as protection right now. Trust me, you don't want what's on the other side yet. Okay. All right. Miss Keisha Handy, are you ready? Woo. Okay. You are ready and you have a whole bunch of shit going on. So as soon as I took the deep breath and I focused on your energy, I got like pink, yellow, like boom, boom. Then this pink is like a magenta -y pink, like a bright, deep magenta pink. And it, for some reason, is up here. The yellow is down here. I feel like this is two different people. I feel like the pink represents you. The magenta represents you. And I feel like the pink has started to shift to the magenta, which is shifting to the red. So that tells me this is a situation with this person who represents the yellow. The yellow represents them. That Because I see them down here, right? So... This is a situation that I feel like is growing in, I don't, I, I'm trying to think of the right word, frustration, anger, this inability to fix it. It's, it's like all of those roadblocks that you come up against in a situation with somebody. But the fact that this person is down here tells me that this is somebody, it's not somebody you feel like you're over. It's somebody that you care about, somebody you protect, somebody you take care of. And I almost feel like this is a kid or somebody younger than you. But I see you shifting like this, like they're here. I see you, the color shifting like this, like as a, as a umbrella. So here's the thing. I don't want you shifting to the red. Magenta is good. Magenta is good. So pink people usually are a lot more passive. They allow things to just, okay, it is what it is. Let it go. And they, they just kind of let things happen. Magenta is a great in between between that and let's burn the fucking world to the ground. So magenta is doing enough things to stop other shit from happening. Like to this person, this yellow person, but still knowing when to be like, you know what? Fucking your face, go on about your business. But not a scorched earth policy yet. If you go the scorched earth policy in this situation, if you move to the red, it causes a huge shift with this person with the yellow, okay? It causes them to turn orange. It causes them to put a wall up. So do not allow whatever the situation is to push you to the red, to push you to the scorched earth policy. Stay the magenta because right now is exactly what the yellow needs from you. <sighs> You, you as the magenta is a stabilizing force for the yellow. You as a pink allows the yellow to have damage. You as the scorched earth pushes the yellow away from you. So you have to stay this magenta color right now. So then as soon as I said that, I saw a brown horse and then blue flowers, like little tiny blue 
I think they're forget me nots because I see them like this, like pop, 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 pop. I think they're forget me nots. And they're in like, I see the horse here and the flowers are in front of the horse. Like, like I see the horse and the flowers are like that. So in this big field. And I feel like I need to reiterate, stay the magenta. Don't go to the red, okay? Mm, that's a heavy situation. Like I felt it pushed down on my brain. Like this is a heavy situation, sweet pea. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you have to go through that. That's not, it's not a fun situation to be in that position. I'm sorry. All right. Miss Amy Walker, are you ready? So the first thing I saw with you, Amy, I fixed my chair. The first thing I saw with you was like, it was weird. It was a whole bunch of little brown pebbles like this. And then all this, like they were leading up a path and also it was like, boom, and there's a mountain. So it's like pebble, 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 mountain. Like there was no in between. And the mountain is covered with snow and so on. So here's, here's the thing with that. This is, you have made a mountain. You have made a mountain that is standing in front of you. It was a whole bunch of little tiny pebbles. You had busted it down to pebbles. And then for some reason, you allowed it to become a mountain again. And I say you allowed it for a reason because you are the one that let it be the mountain. I just keep seeing the mountain. So the mountain is literally blocking you from moving forward. It's blocking you from your path. It's blocking you. It's starting to block your abilities because it's like, I see the mountain continue to get bigger and the shadow just grows. You know what I mean? You know how, when the sun goes down behind the mountain, the shadow just gets bigger and bigger. Like that's what's happening. So I see you here. There are still little pebbles here, but then boom, the mountain. And it's almost like the mountain is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So here's the thing. There is a line between the pebbles and where the mountain starts. And the mountain doesn't just go like this. It's just instant mountain wall. But it's like when I focus on it, I can shift it sideways. And so I see the pebbles and the mountain. The mountain is literally like this. It's flat. It's a line. It's not an actual mountain. It's a perceived mountain. So what I would say is you need to backtrack a little bit. Go back to the pebbles. Go back to the pebbles. Okay. I would say go back about three months and where you were. And this is probably going to take you, it's going to take you a shift. It's going to take you a little bit of time. It's going to take you, okay. You need to kind of go back mentally about three months ago of where you were with the pebbles because there are a lot of pebbles, don't get me wrong, but you had busted these boulders down into pebbles. All you really had to do was sweep the pebbles off, but you gathered the pebbles back up and when you did, mountain. The thing is, you can take those pebbles and throw them at the mountain and it busts through. It's almost like the mountain is actually paper. It looks real and it looks solid and it looks like you can never get past it again. But the thing is, it's not. It's paper. And all you have to do is throw the pebbles and bust through the fucking paper. And A, it gets rid of the mountain and B, it gets rid of the fucking pebbles. So the best way to do that is to go back three months and look at the pebbles, look at the pebbles that were there. Make a list of what your problems were three months ago, because the mountain is something that you put in place and you can easily take it back down. And I wouldn't recommend just rolling it up and putting it away. I would recommend throwing those fucking pebbles at it and busting it completely down. I mean, like, get a fucking machine gun and load those pebbles in and just let it go. Let it go. And every time this starts to pop up in your head, you need to throw more, you need to like, nope, nope, nope. Because it's been there for so long and you've kept this perceived mountain in the background. Like you just keep like rolling it down and then you put it back up. 
and then you roll it down and you put it back up. That's why I said it needs to be destroyed. So then every time it wants to start rebuilding itself, you need to just flat say no, shake your head and say no. Like you need a physical thing with me. One of the things that I did, and, and this is for all of you guys listening or whatever, one of the physical things that you can do to stop yourself from thinking a line of thoughts. Okay. So say that you start thinking about, well, this person did all this shit to me and it starts to pop back in your head and so on. If you squeeze your hand really hard and you dig your fingernails into the palm of your hand, it's a pain. It's a pain receptor. Okay. It's a pain. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It hurts. Don't do it so hard that you like really hurt yourself, but just that like, oh fuck, that kind of hurt. It jars your brain and try it real quick. Okay. Try it real quick. It jars your brain into going, ow, fuck. And so the thought that was over here, this motherfucker did me dirty. Uh, no, no, you can't get past somebody doing you dirty if you're still thinking about it. So whatever this is, Amy, you've got to start doing that. You've got to do something that breaks that path that breaks that thought process okay all right summer thompson you're next i had to pull my little thing up so that way i can mark like who who i've gotten to so far all right summer i had a feeling summer that you needed to hear that as well like you needed to hear that last part as well didn't you because as soon as i focused on your energy i started grabbing my sphere like this instead of just like messing around I started like like grabbing it so the first thing I see is an elephant and it's like the head with the ears out like this and it's silver It's so funny. As soon as I started trying to focus on pulling in a different image or pulling in whatever else, it's like I, my whole head, everything feels really fucking heavy. Like I'm just bogged down and I can't get past it. So that right there tells me that you have way, way, way too much on your plate right now. You're taking on too much to the point that I don't remember the game, but it's like a balancing game and you have to put the stuff on and if it tips, all of them fall off. That's what you are right now. And there's just enough of everything on there that one more thing is going to make it topple one way or the other. So you have to start unloading the game board. You have to start unloading the game board. So you need to go back and you need to make a list. And this is exactly what I'd recommend because I feel like you need to see how much responsibility and how much you've actually taken on. So you need to make a list of what all's on your game board. And go back through it and go, okay, I do give a fuck about this. Don't give a fuck about that. Don't really give a fuck about that. Don't really want to do that. Like go through and see what you actually have the energy for. Give it a rating one to five. One being, hell no, I don't have the energy. I don't give a fuck. And five being, this is really important to me. That's exactly what you need to do. Literally make it a game, make it a game. And then you're going to have to take those pieces off in specific ways so you don't topple, okay? But the elephant's important because I saw the elephant again after I talked about it being a gay boy. All right, Bridget Olson, you're next. And Summer, I feel like I just wanna give you the biggest hug ever. I feel like, it's so funny. I had to take two deep breaths, okay. Whenever I started to say Bridget's name and then I felt like I wanted to tell you that I needed to give you the biggest hug, um, it's almost like I felt you do this. I think you just needed somebody else to tell you that you've taken on too much. Sometimes we know it, but we don't want to know it. And so we have to wait for somebody else to tell us. So, all right. A Bridget, Bridget, Bridget. I almost skipped you. I'm not going to skip you. Bridget also. So the first thing I see with you, Bridget, is like a, a stream going through all these rocks and the trees and the mountains. It's like this beautiful little stream. 
It's very calm. I mean, it's running, it's doing its thing, but it's calm. There's no rapids, there's no splashing, there's no burbling. You know what I mean? Like, it's just this nice calm. Like, I could listen to this water all day long. I would put me to sleep, but it would put me to sleep, but I could listen to it all day long. And then it's like, I see where this is at first it was going sideways like this and now I see myself like the river down going down the river like this and all of a sudden I see the snow coming in like that and it's almost like it wants to curl in on the river but here's like in a composite and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger but there seems to be like these invisible walls holding the snow up to keep it from getting into the water to keep it from covering the water and, and freezing the water so here's the thing you're extremely protected right now you're, you have no idea how protected you are right now. I know it may not feel like it. And I know it feels like there's too many rocks in the river for it to really be calm, but you're extremely protected right now. So all of these things that are piling up to the side and you keep seeing them get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like, you're just waiting for the avalanche to start. Stop looking at the snow. Stop looking at everything pile stop just stop looking at it okay because the more you acknowledge it the more power you give it in fact stop talking about it stop thinking about it stop giving it any energy because all of this stuff is not meant to be on your plate it's not meant to be in your river right now the rocks yes the rocks are supposed to be there everybody has rocks but the thing is yours are small they're like this Whereas some people have boulders, you have these beautiful little small, perfectly round rocks where the water can just blah, blah, blah. These are the, the things that you've been dealing with. You already know they're there. These are the normal things. The snow is not. Stop thinking about the snow. This is, this is me telling you to literally put horse blinders on. You only see the river. That's it. You don't see the snow. Stop. Because if you keep giving it energy, if you keep speaking it into existence, then the universe is going to go, okay, well, I had protections in place, but you don't want them. And it's going to raise the protections and the snow is going to come in. So stop giving it energy, okay? What you need to do instead is literally speak into existence how protected you are. How protected you are, okay? By speaking that into existence, you keep the protections, you keep the walls up. Whew. All right, April Van Groll, you ready, April? Ooh, girl, you are not getting enough sleep. You are not getting enough sleep. As soon as I focus in on you, it's like my whole brain went, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. First of all, you need to tell everybody to leave you the fuck alone. You need to tell everybody, leave me the fuck alone. You need to turn your fucking phone off. You need to turn your laptop, your tablet, whatever it is. You need to turn all the shit off and you need to tell everybody that you need some fucking, like I'm getting angry for you. I'm getting angry for you. You need a break, man. You, you are so much like me. You have spoiled everybody around you to the point that they expect you to do everything for them. Like the things that they come to you and want you to do. And you're like, are you, are you shitting me right now? Like you're an adult, you're a big boy. Why are you doing this? Why, why should I have to do these things? Here's the thing. You don't have to do them. They need to literally fuck the fuck off of you for a little bit, because I feel this stress and this pressure and this anxiety that you have going on so deep. Like it's making me angry in the core of me for you. Like, I want to go to everybody in your life and be like, fuck the fuck off. Like, leave her alone. Like, I want to be like this huge fucking golem warrior in front of you, just like slamming people away with a battle axe. Like, that's how I feel. Like, it's actually getting me kind of worked up. So here's the thing. I know whenever I said that you need to take a break and you need to tell everybody fuck off and so on. You were like, I would love to do that, but I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And you have to, because if you don't, you're going to crumble. Like that anger, that crack is going to literally pull you in half. And 
it's going to make it to where you are not good to anybody. You can't help anybody. You're going to end up with some major health problems and knocking, like getting knocked down a peg really badly if you don't do this. So here's the thing. Feel free to use me as an excuse. Okay. Say, Hey, I had an appointment with my spiritual advisor. Totally. This is totally an appointment. Okay. I had an appointment with my spiritual advisor and look, I have to step back. I have to take a break. I have to, and, and literally tell them like, Hey, I've got, I've got to focus on this and I've got to do this so I can, whatever you want to say, whatever it is you need to say, but here's how I would put it. My spiritual advisor advised me that I need to step back for a day, for two days, for a week, whatever. I need an hour. However, okay. Start big. Tell them you need a week. Some people will be like, oh God, okay, I'm sorry. Some people will be like, well, blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, a couple of days. Don't tell them you need an hour. Okay, tell them you need a fucking week. Tell them you have some trauma that you're working through. Okay, use me as an excuse. Fuck them because I'm about to come through with a spiritual fucking scythe and just throat punch everybody with it girl yeah please feel free to use me as excuse i'm down i'm down okay Woo. all right courtney ready that is so funny so as soon as i focus on your energy i heard the Katy perry song um daisies and i saw this cascade of daisies like come down like this and all in front of me and just like cover the whole ground. You are just a fucking ball of flowery sunshine. Okay. So you miss being that ball of sunshine. Something has dimmed that because it's uh, like I said, I heard the song and then I saw them like that. And I saw this beautiful blue sky. And then all of a sudden it's like everything turned gray. So I don't feel like this is the same thing as, as with April, where you're taking on too much. What I feel like this is, is something that's weighing really heavy. It sits really heavy right here. Like it is, it's a, it's this gray. I was going to say boulder, but boulder is not the right word. It's just gray. It's almost like you've lost your passion lately. You've lost your drive. You've lost your will. You've lost your, aunt, your mojo. And then I come back to the daisies. Okay. So sweet pea, you need to, you need to surround yourself with daisies right now. And I don't mean go out and buy all the daisies. What I mean is look up the spiritual meaning of daisies. You need to surround yourself with the things that make you, you, with the things that put you back to you, with the things that allow you to feel that simplicity and that happiness again i know that the fucking world is a dumpster fire right now i know and the weight of that is weighing on everybody that has gone through a spiritual awakening horribly horribly bad not only is it weighing on us but it makes it to where we don't want to focus on anything because part of it it's almost like we start going well what's the fucking point what's the fucking point? Because the world's in a dumpster fire. And if I focus on it, it may not be there. I understand. So here's the thing. I need you to unplug, not in the same way as April, but I need you to unplug from this, from this gray sitting there. I literally want you to make in your mind, some flower armor that's steel daisies between you and the gray. Because if you allow that gray in too much, it's going to drive you into a very deep, dark night of the soul. It's going to drive you into some depression and some severe anxiety. And the world needs Courtney to be okay right now because Courtney is daisies. Courtney is daisies. Courtney is daisies. And too many people need those daisies. Okay. You have a very specific bright path to walk and... If you're not okay, 
if you allow the gray in, the gray wins. And the gray will get the other daisies. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? <sighs> okay. All right, Miss Michelle Elms, you ready? So the first thing I see with you, Michelle, is this beautiful deep cobalt blue. And then I see a cedar tree. And then I see a crow or raven. And then I see a deer and then an elk, like boom, boom. It's like the deer and then the elk. They're, they're almost transposed. Okay, so I still see the deer and the elk. I see the field. I see the I see the trees behind them. I see the mountain. But it's a very peaceful, calming. Like I just want to take a breath of this beautiful place, this beautiful, calm place. It's like a happy place. So what's funny is when I said it's a happy place, and I kind of like look down at my feet. There are roses everywhere, pink and white. There's a few yellow scattered in here and there, but mainly pink and white. Y'all ever have that day where it's like you can't figure out if you're hot or cold? That's where I'm at. Okay. Then I see peppermint, like candies. So peppermint will open your senses back up, including your spiritual senses. I feel like you've lost your happy place. You haven't lost it. You haven't lost it. It's still there. I think that you just moved the door. You just moved the door, okay? The door is still there. It's just to the left a little bit, okay? You've grown, like you've grown tremendously. And I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit for how much you've grown. So when we grow, when we go through shifts, when we go through movement, when we go through change, especially spiritually, emotionally, the doors to our happy places shift. And we just have to find the door. We just have to know where it is. Yours is just to the left a little bit. Yours is just to the left a little bit and not even very far but it's just enough that you can't see it, but it's still there. So all you have to do is shift your thinking a little bit. So I would look up like spiritual meaning of left or whatever, but I can tell you that the left is the spiritual side of the body, whereas the right is the physical. So I hope that helps a little bit. All right, Kelly Bout, you ready? <sighs> So the first thing I see with you is snapdragons, pink snapdragons. And then I see, huh, it's funny, I saw a jar and then I saw the cork, like the top is the cork. And then all of a sudden the cork is out of the bottle and I see the cork in like an ocean and it's just bobbing up and down. So this is funny. I feel like that, like that's that, to me tells me that you had something that you had either manifested, done, et cetera, to put something in a bottle. And I have a feeling it's someone to put someone in this bottle and you felt bad. And so you stopped, you opened the bottle back up. Well, now you can't find the lid to put the fucking <laughs> bottle back together. You can't like the lid, the cork just took off and now you can't recork the bottle and now you remember all over again why the fuck you were manifesting doing etc putting this person in the fucking bottle so i'm just going to tell you this you don't need that cork what you need is a fucking steel plate the cork was never going to hold that anyway you need a fucking steel plate like a six inch 
steel fucking plate. And not only does it need to go on top of the jar, but it needs to melt around the fucking bottle. It needs to melt around the jar, the bottle. Like, and then like, here's what I, what I'm watching happen. Once you realize that you, you don't need that cork anymore, you don't need that cork anymore. So the cork, the bottle with the cork was you being nice. The bottle with the cork was you being nice. The steel plate is what you need. You don't need to be nice anymore. Okay. You allowed them to have either a second or third, fourth chance. I feel like it was a second chance. You thought, you know what? I'm being a little hard. Let me do this. No. You needed to allow them to really show their ass because I have a feeling that at first you were like, okay, you know what? This is great. And this is exactly why I let, I pulled the cork off. Now, however, they have doubled down and they have shown you exactly who they are. And so they need a fucking six inch steel plate on top of that fucking bottle. And not only does it need to melt down around the bottle, but it needs to start crushing that fucking bottle until it's fucking pancake. But here's the thing, play the long game with it, okay? It's not something that is going to take quick, 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 quick things. You need to plan and you need to document and you need to play the long game with this because you need that bottle crushed. You don't need it just shut up. You don't need it just sealed. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, Leslie Crosby, you are next. All right, Ms. Leslie. Hmm. So the first thing I saw with you, Ms. Leslie, is glasses. Just glasses. So you'll look up, you know, spiritual meaning of glasses. And then I see like this fluffy, oh, I thought it was a teddy bear, but it has to be a dog because it has real long shaggy ears. So, you know, like the pound puppies, like I see the stuffed animal face and like the real long shaggy ears and it's brown. So this to me represents something in your childhood. Okay. I don't know if you have been thinking a lot about this lately or if it's something that you have stuffed down and not thought about, but there's something in your childhood specifically. And it, for some reason, revolves around this stuffed animal. I don't know if you had one or what that symbolizes to you, but I would say this is probably between six and seven. But this is something that you have kind of forgotten about. You have shoved down, but it still affects you so fucking deeply. And what's funny is every time you focus on it, every time it pops up, you tell yourself, well, that's something stupid. And it was so long ago and it doesn't matter. And you shove it right the fuck back down. But it's bubbling to the surface more and more and more lately. And if you don't stop and put on those reading glasses and look back and unpack that and process it, it's going to become a tidal wave and it's going to pull you down from the inside. Like, so whatever this is, it seems like a small thing, but it is not a small thing, okay? It has festered and grown in there. So you've got to put those glasses on and you've got to unpack that, okay? You've got to unpack that. And for some reason, I feel like you don't remember all of it what I would recommend starting off doing to help you remember all of the situation and to help you see why you see the situation the way you do now, okay, is there's all kinds of different things on YouTube. Um, meditations, they're like hypnot where you can hypnotize, you know, go into a memory or whatever in your sleep. This is what I'd recommend, but here's how I recommend you do it, okay? Find one, find, there's, when you type in that, you like, meditation to recover lost memories or whatever listen to the first little bit of it you know 10 15 seconds and then skip to the middle now when you skip to the middle if you like the first 10 15 seconds and you skip to the middle and the middle you like cool that's the one you should listen to but if you skip to the middle and the middle is like oh that is terrible like whatever that beat is whatever those waves are no do not listen to that one because that's going to be when you're in REM sleep. And that's really the time when you're in those memories and so on. It's going to make that a nightmare. Don't use that one. Find one that you, you know what I mean? Like spot, spot, listen through it. Find the one that you're like, okay, I like this. I like all of this. Because if you have one that has too deep of waves, too deep of binaural beats, too deep of whatever, 
it will turn that memory into a nightmare. And that is not what you need. What you need is to be able to focus on that memory with a logical, calm mind. Okay. So even if it's something super horrible that happened, you need to be able to go back and kind of unpack in a very calm way. And when you're falling asleep, what you need to do is you need to put yourself in the mind of you are, do you ever watch sci-fi movies where like there's one Star Trek episode where there is an outpost on this planet and they're trying to not fuck with the people there. They're trying to let them go how they're supposed to go, evolve how they're supposed to evolve. So they have this observatory and it's invisible. It's shielded, right? That's how you need to look at things. Okay. You need to have this invisible observatory and you need to be looking at that memory in a very objective way, not as you, you need to be looking at it. Like this is somebody you're trying to help. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's how you need to approach it. You need to approach it in the fact that you're a scientist and you're studying this and you're taking notes. Okay. Be very logical about it. And I know that sounds crazy and stupid or whatever, but trust me, it works. Okay. As you're falling asleep, you need to put yourself in that role, like envision yourself in certain clothes that make you feel very smart, very intelligent, very sciencey, very logical, whatever it is. I mean, if you need to envision yourself as Neil deGrasse Tyson, cool. As Stephen Hawking, cool. You see what I'm saying? Like envision yourself in that way. Okay. John Luke Picard, Data, whoever you need to be, be that person. Okay. Be Deanna Troy. Um, I'm a Star Trek nerd. I can't help it. That will help you unpack it. As soon as you wake up, you need to get a voice recorder out and go blah, 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 and say everything into it because it will leave very quickly. If you don't, you will not remember it. Even if you have to do it while you're going potty or fixing your coffee, you need to be like, blah, 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 blah. And then you can go back to it and write it down later. So here's the thing. When you do that, and then you go back and write it down later, you will remember more because you are creating almost like a tag lock with your voice to pull that dream and that download and that hypnotization into there. Boom. You've got all of it. Okay. All right. Miss Angela Rector, are you ready? Why are you in a box? Um, the first thing I saw was it's like, I felt like I'm sitting in a box in a black square box. And I feel like, I feel like my shoulders are touching the sides, but they're not like the sides are pretty far out, but you feel like the box is closing in. So the next thing I see is, is there's a white light in front of me, but a yellow light coming up like that, like coming up in front of my face there's a white light, but it's just a pinpoint way out. There. And for some reason, you keep wanting to reach toward the white light. You keep wanting to grab the pinpoint. Like that's where you keep focusing on, but the yellow light is right here and it's huge. And all you have to do is step into that yellow light and you're out of the box. But for some reason, you may be a little stubborn. And for some reason, you keep insisting on going to that little pinpoint of light, but that pinpoint of light is so far off that it is unreachable at this moment. It's unreachable on the path that you're trying to force. And so that's why the universe is like roadblock, 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 roadblock. The universe has been trying so hard to be like, hey, pause. Like this is not the path you need to take. And it's been literally giving you all the signs for the other path you need to take, but you're forcing this one. So all you have to do is take a step forward into the yellow light and you're out of the box you're out of the box and like rocketing so what's funny is even though the pinpoint of light say is right here okay it's right there stepping into the yellow light takes you down and around and so on and you get to the white pinpoint of light but you have to go at it from this other way you have to step into this other light that the universe has been showing you like right now, you are absolutely that meme where your spirit guides are like, because oh, they've been trying to give you everything that you need to move forward. The path is not straightforward. The path is never straightforward. Trust me. Nobody ever has just a straightforward path. We think we do. We don't. 
you have this curving twisty path. Okay. So stop trying to force going to that pinpoint of life, try your end goal. Okay. Stop trying to force it and step into the path that is illuminated in front of you right now. It's the easiest path. Sometimes the easiest path is the best path. And that's what you need to take right now. Okay. All right. Miss Laura Gallardi, are you ready? So the first thing that I see with you, there's three men right there. And I, th I don't, they're not passed away. Like they're just three men that are in your life right now. And they're very important to you. The one in the middle is taller than the other two. So it's like, this one is about this tall, this one is this tall, and this one is down here. So I feel like this one might be a kid or somebody younger. This one over here is older. This is middle age and this is younger. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So the one in the middle is the one I keep focusing on. He's really tall, really kind of broad shoulders, kind of barrel chest, and he either is losing his hair or he shaves his head. But for some reason, I feel, I feel like there's like literally short hair. I almost, I feel like there's like the shaggy beard face there too. He reminds me of a lumberjack. Like he even has on yellow and black flannel striped shirt. So all of these things are symbolic because I think the beard is symbolic. So I don't know what the spiritual meaning of a beard is, but like this is somebody that you feel like is a very strong person. You feel like they can overcome anything. They have a very, very wonderful, amazing smile. And they really care about you. But for some reason, you keep them at arm's length. You keep all three of these men at arm's length. They all care about you. The younger one is kind of like out there. Like he's really self-absorbed, but he does care about you. But you keep them all like this at arm's length. At, you just push them away at arm's length. You need to bring that middle one that I just talked about, that I described. You need to allow him in more. You need to allow him into your life more, okay? He can handle it. That's why he's there. That's why he's in your life. He can handle what you need to get off your chest. He can take the boulder off your back and help you break it into little pieces, but you have to allow him to help. You have to allow him in. So whenever I said that and I touched my chest, it's like, I see you with this steel armor all around you. It's like one solid sheet of steel. You are just solid steel. You don't let anybody in. I'm not saying open that steel armor up and let him completely inside like that. What I'm saying is start allowing him to step closer to you. Okay. He's in your path in your life for a reason. I feel like the older person, the older man that's there, he was in your path when you were younger. He's still in your path now. Don't get me wrong. He had more of an impact on you when you were younger. And once you allow this other person in to help you a little bit, he will start having more of an impact on you now. Well, then I guess the younger one is the second one you need to kind of allow in a little bit, little by little, because the younger one is not quite ready for everything yet. He's still learning and he's still figuring things out and he has some intensive gifts. And this is why he is this like closed in hermit. I'm not letting anybody in. And I have a feeling you worry about him. Um, by you allowing him in little by little and giving him little tidbits of information and so on about you, your gifts and so on. I say, and so on forever, I guess. It helps him understand that he's not alone, that he's not crazy and so on, okay? So on and so on and so on. So, does that help? See, now here we are cold again. <laughs> All right. Miss Amelia Jansen. You ready, Miss Amelia? 
So the first thing I see with you is a Mardi Gras parade. Like all the floats and the fantastic things and the glitter and the green and the gold and the purple, like all of the all of the flamboyant show off. That's so funny. But it's frozen. Like I just realized it's frozen. Like even the confetti in the air is frozen. But it's not a picture. Like I'm there. I'm literally, I can turn and I can look and I can see. It's almost like I can see and feel the uh, confetti, but it's just frozen. Why did you stop being this amazing, outgoing? Why did you stop? Because it's funny, I realized that you froze that. You froze it. You, okay. So here's what I just saw when I'm focusing on that. There's a man who has really, really dark hair and a dark mustache. And he's just, he's always like this. Like he's just a hard ass person. Not only is he a hard ass person, but he's hard on everybody else. There's no play. There's no silliness. There's no nothing. Like you knuckle down and you be logical and you work and you do the things and there's no time for fun. Like he is just mm, like, I don't want to around. You, you allowed somebody to freeze your parade. You allowed somebody to tell you to freeze your break and here's the thing but no 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 you are the parade you are the mardi gras i want to cry why do i want to cry babe you are the mardi gras parade you are the mardi gras parade fuck that person man you are the mardi gras It's funny when I said you are the Mardi Gras parade that last time. It's like in my mind's eye, I saw you reach up and go and just hit one piece of that confetti and it started spinning. Sweet Pea, all you've got to do is start the confetti spinning and the parade will take back off, okay? Don't allow somebody to stop you, Mardi Gras parade. You are fantastic. You are the Mardi Gras parade. And if that person can't see that, run over them with the parade. I'm just saying. Run over them with the parade floats. <laughs> I want to give you a huge hug too, Miss Amelia. Stop letting people stop your parade. You are the Mardi Gras parade, honey. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you for being so patient with me. I appreciate it. I really do.